Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment. Hello, and welcome to Champions of Psychology, a show with the goal of openly talking about mental health and gaming presented by Codename Entertainment and TakeThis.org. Every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on twitch.tv slash CNE Games or later on your favorite podcast service. <laughs> I don't know why I can't get through that last part. I get to that sentence and then I mess up. I apologize. <laughs> Rafael Bocamazzo, a.k.a. Dr. B, and Mitra Jordan talk about mental health and gaming uh, and how gaming affects us. Uh, if you're this live in the chat, you can leave a question that I, Trevor Bettis, will ask them later in the show. And our topic today is hobbies and a word that i have difficulty saying so i'm just gonna try eccentricities i got it i think you got it <laughs> but, but, you got it but before we get to that who are you two for the fine folks who may not know uh well i'm mitra jordan i am eccentric uh i also no i really i've been called it my whole life and you know finally it seemed like i was happy about that but uh, um i I'm in private practice as a therapist in Victoria, BC, and uh, I love games and also hobbies, of which I have many. How's that? <laughs> we are now turned to Dr. Rafael Bocamazzo, known affectionately as Dr. B, for long Italian name reasons, uh, who is a, a psychologist in private practice in uh, the Seattle region, Seattle, Washington, and who <laughs> likes a fine brew now and again. What are you drinking? <laughs> I was just in drinking some water so I could introduce myself while I was drinking some water. It was really a great trick. That looked way more interesting than water. Oh, <laughs> no, it is Waterloo. What? <laughs> Hashtag you know, that's, not a sponsor. That's, Hashtag not realize. a sponsor. That's that's water and also English for bathroom. <laughs> and also where Napoleon well, they met are his, related. So I <laughs> Well, we're gonna it's move also, on past that one. <laughs> it's but we also, are talking about eccentricities, so you know that true. seems well fitting. Uh yeah, especially if we want to get into the ABBA connection. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Cause right, it's Waterloo. Right. Mm. right. Right. Yeah. I'm the only person in my family who does not like ABBA. Well, that's a that's I a mean, show on its own right there. Uh, right there. Get the whole rest of the yeah. family in there in here. I am sad for I, Abba. Abba ruled my my childhood and very early adolescence I, so much. Listen, I, I I have weird taste, and I will own up to that. I did twenty years of musical theater on a local level, and um, I you know twenty years of musical theater on a local level, and most of the shows that everybody came to were the ones I hated. So. <laughs> They were fun to do. Yeah, yeah. They were uh, fun to do. So uh, we are here uh, today, yeah, to talk about some hobbies and eccentricities. And last week we talked about uh, uh, hobbies and why you should make time for them. So why are we yeah. talking about this now? Well, uh, we're talking. Well, we talked last time about how hobbies are good for us, um, but uh, you know, I, I think every one of us, because all three of us are either autistic, ADHD, or both. And I bet we were all three called pretty weird growing up. 100%. Yeah. Yep. The whole time, growing up, grown up, all of it. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of our viewers may have been called a little weird, maybe even bullied like some of us were. <laughs> and... <laughs> because we were different from the norm. And so we wanted to talk about eccentricities and why it's okay to basically be weird. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, 
and it's very appropriate for this channel because yeah, we we are a gaming channel and whatnot like that. Um, and we, I mean, we make a game about Dungeons and Dragons that is in a different, uh, you know, genre than Dungeons and Dragons is, and so it, it is a very niche thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and it was it was inspired by our deep love of mm -hmm. D D. Yeah, it comes mm -hmm. right out of how much. Um, we love it and how many of us grew up with it and how that's really a significant part of our lives. So, yeah. Yeah. We're dri driven by love. This is a really good place to be in your life, really. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and oh, go, it, go. It, no, I was, uh, I think I was about to leap into what you were, you were trying, you were going to say. <laughs> so. Leap away. <laughs> what is eccentric behavior? Well, let's talk about normal. Let's talk oh, about normal because I, I have a so those of you who have watched this long enough know I have a soapbox about the term normal. And um I I mean I've even seen it show up in the chat already once or twice the, the <laughs> idea that normal doesn't exist. Normal does exist. It's just not what people think it is because very normal is simply a statistical term and very oh my god, I am really you know, when I got this new office and I said, Hey, there's train tracks out there. Um, is that going to be loud? Because I do broadcasting. And they were like, don't worry about it. The I actually don't hear it. So you're good. Awesome. Don't hear um, it at all. So, uh, yeah. So normal is a statistical term. It means what two thirds of people would do in a given situation. But if you listen to what I said there, two thirds of people in a given situation, you all, it also means that it's, it's anchored in both time, situation, and who you're around. Where people run into problems with the word normal is where they also start they start mixing it up with good or bad for abnormal. There's a lot of really abnormal experiences that are wonderful. And everybody who ever did something creative was technically abnormal from a statistical perspective. And so we normal is simply what people expect. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it is. Right. And from an anthropological standpoint, it's also the norm in terms of what people expect in behavior. Mm -hmm. So what we expect is also based on the context that we understand. And that context changes, which is why right. culture to culture norms might be quite different. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, Galibon just brought up a great example because I grew up Catholic. <laughs> Um, and I remember one time us getting chastised for behaving in church, like it, my whole class, because we were trying to be cute, um, behaving in church the, the way we would at a sports game. And uh, they are, in fact, very different standards of normal. Very Doing different the wave standards and of views. normal. I'm just really amused by this idea. I'm Did we go to the same school, now. Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, you, you're saying that normal is, uh, the, what is expected. And we've talked about before how, ex, uh, you know, having pre predetermined expectations and whatnot is not always a, a great thing. And so that, and that's kind of all that normal, uh, the idea of normal is, is like, you're not acting the way we expect you to act. Therefore you are weird. Um, right. So that brings, yeah, a lot of judgment, like you were saying, with, with getting bullied and whatnot. Yes. Um, <laughs> so what, what, what is, I, I guess uh, the, the point that I'm trying to get here is like, what does this have to do with hobbies? Well, our hobbies are often, you know, I, I, you know, Mitra had a great example, I think, where we were talking yesterday. What are acceptable hobbies? Like, mm. actually, I want to throw this to both of you. I want to throw this to both of you and even the chat. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Like I'm, um, I, I want, I'm going to list some hobbies and just gut reaction for the normal people is this is is this an acceptable hobby as an adult? Okay. Hang on. Okay. Let me, let me get into my normal people uh, okay. headspace. Okay. Football, Hold on. Yeah. No, football, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm also going to get into my normal headspace. Okay. I'm just there changing the light for a second. Definitely here. not there eccentric. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, not yeah. eccentric at all. All right. Okay. Yeah. Football, uh, local sports team. Yes. Uh, 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 that, the weird superstitions uh, around putting your hat on backwards. All right. I'm America. There. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> okay. And there's certainly a lot of Canadian ones around hockey. <laughs> Sports teams, I think, in general, there's a lot around uh, sports, and I think there's 
I think when we talk about sort of the norm and hobbies, we're talking about what people feel they have permission to get excited about very publicly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so is hockey an acceptable hobby? Uh, yeah, for lots of people, absolutely. Okay. okay. So, okay. so what's it, what's another one, Doctor B. Okay. Uh, model rocketry. Oh God, I, I want to say yes, but no. That's that's weird. <laughs> See, yeah. That just gut reaction. That yep. that that might be considered weird. Okay, hold on. Let me go with another one here. Um, thinking about this antique typewriter repair. Esoteric, I'd say. Um, okay. But, you know, it, how different is it from antique sewing machine repair? Well, let's throw that into the mix. Right? Is that an, is that an acceptable hobby as an adult? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I want to say that a lot of things that have to do with repair and reconditioning and fixing things up probably are. Because if we start to look at antique cars and that, that kind And of that is works. very much the acceptable n- yeah, normal. Yeah, no, that's hobby yeah. right so a lot of crafts would probably fall into okay. this in some way or another but it's probably a, a question of of degrees um and okay, that's uh, what you do with the craft okay yeah what yeah. about me what? repairing antique sewing machines and engaged in competitive crochet oh ah, so we bring gender into it which we talked mm-hmm. about yesterday as well mm-hmm. yeah that's that certainly um, changes the picture sometimes. I think particularly for uh, how welcome do people feel uh, in a community or environment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there's uh, there's an important this distinction. Is a very in chat. slowly changing. Oh yeah. Is, is the sewing <laughs> with or without the tiara? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, that are you is a me? significant question. Are you freaking? Kidding but what me. are we sewing? If it's miles of tool, I feel the tiara is like practically a requirement. If you're sewing tool. miles of tool, you have my respect. I'm no, not thinking about God, whether that's weird nobody or not. Wants to sew tool miles kind of of tool. Tough. Yeah. Oh God, you're just asking for heartache to sew miles of tool. Well, it does depend on the tool. I mean, if you get really particular, there's some incredible silk tool, which is gloriously soft, also very, very expensive, which brings (laughs) us to another issue related to hobbies. And that's often the cost of the hobby. Um, Mm. And and I will add sort of the hidden costs of the hobby as well in terms of materials and tools and how we perceive these, right? There was a... uh, I think I mentioned the yarn harlot last time. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring her back into the conversation. So Stephanie Pearl McPhee, the yarn harlot, talked about um, the cost of hobbies. And she was talking specifically about, say, knitting versus golf, right? And um, knitting can actually be relatively expensive, especially if you want to get knitting machines as well as hand knitting, especially if you want to get really fancy, delicate, beautiful yarns or hand spun yarns, stuff like that can, of course, make it expensive. Um, But what she was talking about was the acceptability of golf, which, you know, if I recall, and I'm not a golf player, but clubs are pretty expensive. And I believe, um, and I'm talking about the clubs that you use to hit the balls, but also Mm -hmm. golf clubs are probably Mm -hmm. also expensive in terms of Oh, I was thinking a different kind of club. (laughs) (laughs) I, I bring my loose change, so I make it hail. Okay. I, I, I think a barbarian club could probably not be used to play golf, but might be a really cool item to cosplay with, which we're really getting off track. But again, cosplaying can be a super expensive hobby. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, the, 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 what you're talking about there with, with, the, with the cost of things is, is, is uh, they can... The, the, there could be a certain perspe- uh, perception of it too. It was just like, oh, that's what you spend all of your money on, which right. again is also such a weird opinion to right. have because it's not your money. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, it's so a, it's a judgment. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. On on the person, right? So this is where it becomes about how much we share about our hobby or how comfortable we feel sharing our hobby um, or whether our hobby is perceived of as childish in some way. You know, if I should be, I don't know, collecting magic cards or painting miniatures, which is, in, those are incredible, mm-hmm. that particularly the painting miniatures and the stuff that- Thank you. That, yeah, it's, it's a, it, but, but- Careful. There can be judgment around this from yeah. people who don't understand. 
So, yeah. Well, we've got, I mean, so, so I mean, so to, to kind of bring this all together, I mean, we're talking about a collection of variables that go into our judgments about a person, like just based on socioeconomic stata, status, based on gender, based on age, that a lot of people have ideas for what is an acceptable way to spend your free time. Yeah. And judge you based on that. Um, yeah. So if I, you know, as a fully grown adult, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Had to remove the um, tiara. <laughs> most, you know, most people, if they, you know, if I was wearing a tiara out in public, um, they would probably give a second glance yeah, because it's unexpected. But here's where we get into the question of judgment. Why? Why do we judge? Ooh. Well, one take is we have this desire to put people in tidy little boxes um, to make sense of them. Um, so if I see someone with a tiara who I don't expect to be wearing one, um, maybe I don't know how to contextualize their behavior. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that makes them uneasy. For others, it doesn't matter. I'm fully on the, why does it matter? Oh, okay. What uh -huh. is it to me? And why on earth do I have to contextualize anyone's behavior? What does it matter? If someone's walking down the street wearing a tiara, that's their business. Um, because, and this gets into how we express our identity yeah. and how we present and what's important to us in the world beyond hobbies and, and other matters. It really is, in my perspective, no one's business. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, in fact, I'm more likely to want to talk to the person wearing the tiara, quite honestly. It's true. Well, it's, so. we're, I, and the chat, start, I think the chat's starting to get into this a little bit that we tend to, as people, um, sort of become in group and out groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. We create the R group of people. And it is so weird to see how niche this can get. Like, um, I love fine shaving products. Okay. Love them. I have a soap guy. His name is Will. He makes the best shaving soaps. I love, I love that you have a soap guy. <laughs> and there's a whole forum of shaving enthusiasts that I occasionally go into. Um, cause part of me is like, how much about shaving can we actually talk about in a forum? Um, but I remember one time in this shaving forum where it comparing in group and out groups, who's mm -hmm. part of the cool crowd and who's part of the non cool crowd in a shaving forum. I just want to point that out. I love this story so much. And it, there were people who were mocking this other person who couldn't work up the proper lather. They didn't know how to work up a proper lather with a quote, easy soap. And I, I had to swoop in there and be like, gang, we're talking about soap. And we are judging someone based on soap. How about we welcome them in? How, yeah. if we want to, if we want to do it, how about we teach Yeah. instead of mocking, but this, we create these in groups. Absolutely. Yeah. We create these in groups because we become attached to things and to the idea of things being a certain way, but they're very dangerous because they do risk leaving people out and also shaming people. And that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, my, and that, that goes back to what you were saying with cost of things is, mm -hmm. is when we make these, you know, now you're in what most people consider an eccentric group. And now within that group, you're creating other subgroups and then mm -hmm. shaming those ones who are in the same uh, hobby as you and having the same kind of judgment bully issue as you. And you're like, well, you're not doing this as well. And that could come down to the cost of things. Like when it comes to mini painting and whatnot, someone might just have one brush that they were lucky to get and they painted a mini and then you're coming in and telling them, oh, that looks like, you know, crap and stuff like that. First off, did they ask for your feedback or critique? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't, they probably did. Um, and, and so, yeah, it, it, the, the cost of stuff within hobbies is just that can create its own weird divide 
of mm-hmm. judgment and whatnot, which is also, in my opinion, extremely unhealthy. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've often seen on on um, craft and sewing type groups, right? Mm-hmm. People will post stuff like, I made a thing, you know, and maybe it's the first thing they made, right? And maybe, you know, there's techniques that they haven't quite figured out yet and whatnot. And inevitably, there's snark around if not in that actual thread, in some other thread, sort of snark around, um, oh, I just wish people weren't always so enthusiastic about everything that everyone does, you know, without any discrimination at all. I'm thinking, let it, like, no. I think where we can do that is if someone says, hey, I'm having trouble with this specific thing. Um, Help me figure out what I can change, what I can do, what I can learn from, you know, which is the best paint for whatever. That's great. Yeah. But if that's not what you're doing, you should be, should be welcomed, appreciated, yeah. come on into the fold. You made a thing. Isn't that awesome? I, th- I hope you're having fun. That's the purpose of hobbies. Yeah. That's I- the purpose of them is to support the rest of our lives, to fill our cup, to resource us, not mm-hmm. to be shamed over. Yeah. No, it, it like the the thing with those, like what you're saying about just like, oh, no one says this sort of stuff. It's like, okay, but like I'm sure like when I look at someone who's in a hobby of mine that is uh doing something, I will have critiques in my head, but I don't post them. <laughs> and that mm-hmm. and that's kind of the 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 big thing for me is I'm like, it doesn't mean that people aren't having this or 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 whatnot. But if the, again, like if they asked for feedback and critique on it and wanted to learn something from it. Great. If they're just really excited that they Mm -hmm. did something and you come in with the thought that you don't need to type and just kind of rain on their parade about it. You're you're now within the eccentricities. You're creating a, another judgment bubble and it's so divisions. Yeah. 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 Also judgment bubble is my new band name. Any judgment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to pop that judgment bubble so bad. Their first album. Their first album. Pop yeah. the judgment pop bubble. The judgment <laughs> bubble. Their one and only album. What, uh, kind, of, what kind of music does pop? We'll judgment get into that another play? time. We'll get into that another time. Could it be we're Cajun going on a Ska. tangent? <laughs> <laughs> um okay uh so but what one of the things that I, that I think uh we're also kind of circling around though is um you know w- within the the eccentricities themselves and getting the judgment from outside even within who are we hurting <laughs> like like what why is there the judgment there if we're not hurting anyone but then again there's also from the judgment side of thing who are we hurting with that also, Dr. B looks very confused right now, and I'm I'm concerned. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh-oh. We may, not, we may have lost Dr. Did B. Did you break him? I oh, think it, no. My computer Dixon. setup is, I was like, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I accidentally hit a wheel, a volume wheel, and ah. muted you both. <laughs> this, was my, this was my punishment from the universe for the unholy creation of Cajun Ska. <laughs> That's probably it. That's probably it. I mean, it was a sound-related curse mm-hmm. that came up. So yeah, I think there yeah. you were. A debuff, if uh, you yep. will. Yeah, yeah the, with their oh, Save nice. Zydeco as the new band. I, I, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's, but, a, that's a deep cut right there. But yeah, it's, it's essentially what I was was getting into is the 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 who are we hurting part with it, like of yeah, what 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 what's going on there? Uh, who are we hurting? Yeah. Uh, as long as we're not hurting anybody, uh, yeah, then who cares? Well, you know, who cares? But here's the thing that I think people experience um, in terms of eccentricity and presentation of self. And I think Monkey House mentioned, yeah, we could get into gender presentation around. Um, eccentricity and presentation, but we're not hurting anyone. But the problem is we might be living in quite constrained environments and therefore we have to, we might be putting ourselves at risk. And I think that sometimes when people are not wanting to share about a hobby or downplay something, they are concerned about the reaction that they might get from others. They're concerned about a shame experience possibly or being hurt by a family member who's like, why are you spending all your money on X? You should be, you know, um, you shouldn't be buying 
the Lego or the video games or whatever. Aren't you an adult now? You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So some of it is about self-protection, right? Mm -hmm. And and we don't, we get to choose when it feels safe for us mm -hmm. to talk about our hobbies and we can find our people, right? That's one of the beauties of today and internet and online worlds um, and meetups that happen, you know, specifically to engage in certain hobbies. So we can decide how and when we're going to share those parts of ourselves. Well, and that's and that's the um, that's the upside of in groups. I mean, you mentioned the potential downside in terms of of gatekeeping. Now we're getting into what some of the upsides of in groups are: are finding people with shared values mm -hmm. and finding people who have similar hobbies, like. Um, you know, you mentioned miniature painting, God, when I was, when I was growing up and I was like the only kid in my class who was interested in Warhammer 40 K, mm -hmm. um, and couldn't afford it cause it's Warhammer 40 K. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> um, <fair. laughs> yeah. You want kids to stay off drugs, get them into minis <laughs> <laughs> or imagine they will have no money. Uh, yep. but the. It, you know, I, I was the only one really. And thanks to the, the advent of the internet, we can find our like-minded people who share values. Um, yeah. And I, I, lurking writer brings up or magic, the gathering, I will say there were a lot of kids who played magic at my middle school because it was created in my area and it would kind of debuted. I and don't know I'm actually really sad. About. I missed the train because I got into it during revised and I was getting annihilated by Mox everything. <laughs> People who had the entire collection Listen, of Legends and Antiquities. If, if I could still find a love for Magic the Gathering with all the only person that would play against me having a single uh, squirrel deck that massacred me every time it was played against me, you could have done it too. Uh <laughs> <laughs> nah, I stopped playing at Ice Age. <laughs> That's fair. Um, okay, let's take a quick break to remind our viewers and listeners of our disclaimer, and then we will be back to talk a little bit more about this topic. So we will be right back, I swear, in a prom. Yep, there we go. All right, bye. Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment. Okay, so uh, I mean, this is something that we've we've talked a little bit about last week, but it, it comes into this as well. Uh, play is important, um, Beecher. What, what what do we mean by that? Play is a way to rest our minds and also to engage in learning fun things for us and to also relax. Boy, I'm not saying this very well. Why is play? Why does play matter? Play matters because that's where we also get to rest. Mm -hmm. and we get to do something that's outside of our life context in the sense that it's outside of the responsibilities and rules of other aspects of our life, right? Mm -hmm. So it, the results don't matter in the same way because yeah. it's play. Nobody's going to get hurt because it's play. So varying mm -hmm. degrees of taking play seriously, though, can add problems like let me help you with your DD &D game you know let me show you what to do right right or let me help you fix those seams in that dress that you just made when you just started sewing for the very first time you know that did you really just offer to help me D, &D correctly <laughs> let me just woman explain some stuff oh i am so into this it's so awful you let know. me get my standing board here all right <laughs> i'm, so that I'm really into this undercuts that go we experience criticism in other areas of our lives and we don't need it in our play 
unless we're welcoming it to improve something that we care about. And yeah. that's fine. So, but play is an important way to unwind. Yeah. Um, and to be creative and it fills the cup. Yeah. No, I, I, I think I think that's again why like some of these things that happen with inside uh, hobbies is just confusing to me because I'm like we're just we're just here to like relax and, and like you know not be at work not have all of the stress of everything else so let's just enjoy this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although I was thinking, you know, last night um, I don't know if any of you have watched Alone. There are a number of seasons, but the very first one takes place on Vancouver Island, and it's this survival thing where. Um, people in this case i think mostly men all men and certainly the first one um so they dropped off at these various points of the wilderness the canadian wilderness on mm -hmm. vancouver island and they somehow have to survive and they're dropped off in like i don't know i want to say late october early november on yeah, vancouver island the, on vancouver island so there's as a the lot rainy of rain. season is hitting <laughs> there's not that much food uh they have to so they're trying to survive out here and you know it's kind of people drop off. And so by the one month period, we're sort of down to four people. No spoilers here. I won't say who's what or anything mm -hmm. in case someone wants to watch it. But the notable thing was that one of them, well, a couple of them start to really make things because that's the only way you can kind of cope. You make fish traps, you make, you know, yeah. other stuff. But one of the participants makes a, has a shelter, but then decides to make a yurt. He wants it to be better. Um, he also successfully manages to make other stuff. And then he decides he's going to make a sauna. I'm not sure what happens next. I love this um, person. Right. And he also, in the midst of this, in his sauna making plans, he makes himself a musical instrument. He makes this, himself a stringed instrument. This person he's, sounds like me playing Minecraft. <laughs> so he, so at first when you see this guy, you meet him and he's kind of deciding to build a house and he's pretty ambitious and you're like, oh my God, you know, dude, you're going to be going home so soon. Like this is a lot, right? But as time goes on and he sort of figures out the parameters, what can he successfully make? And then he's making his instrument and he spends a lot of time doing this. And I'm thinking... We're watching this and we're thinking, okay, this isn't going to help him fish or do practical things, which is where I think this really brought me to those two minds that I think people go to when they consider hobbies and how we spend our energy. So he has limited calories to spend, limited energy, right? Because he's trying to conserve his calories to survive, but he stays up much of the night, it seems, making this stringed instrument that he then starts to play. And it's such a sustaining thing for him. Yeah. It's such a reminder that he is capable of doing stuff. And it's a reminder of how important the arts are for people. Like whatever your hobby, the craft, the art, the creativity, the spending time with people, it is a profound resource because it makes you feel like you can. Mm -hmm. Look, I made a thing. Yeah. You know, um, I participated in something. I made music, right? At a time and place where that doesn't normally happen. And it's so significant yeah. to be able to do that. That that is, actually makes me want to watch that show more than anything else I've heard about I, that I show. And now. Yeah. I, I kind of want to go find this now because that sounds uh, fantastic. I really I'm, do like that. I'm really into that, especially, yeah. God, that is the ho most horrible time of the year to be dropped off on the Pacific Coast. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so we're, we're getting towards the point of uh, checking in with chat. Remember, you can uh, ask your questions by putting question, colon, and then the question in there in our awesome mod. Uh, um, Jordan and Martin, I believe, uh, will uh, uh, we'll grab yeah. those. Um, but uh, I, I do want to touch on this real quick before we go to that, which is how do we advocate for ourselves when it comes to this stuff? So how do we advocate for ourselves? <laughs> I was getting sassy in our pre-production meeting, and I just I culminated with – kind of going on the emotional attack when advocating for yourself when people are questioning questioning our hobbies like why are you doing something that's so childish part of me wants to say who hurt you yeah like who hurt yeah. you who took yeah. away your soul uh, i i think i think that yeah really i mean what, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing i think that people do not have to understand you 
they don't have to understand why you do the hobbies that you do. Yeah. Even your loved ones don't. What mm -hmm. they have to do, though, is respect you. Yeah. Respect your right to have that hobby, to mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. You know, because it fills your cup yeah. in some way, like other things don't. And mm -hmm. it's really important. And guess what? That makes you a better and more resource person for everyone around you. The, mm -hmm. yeah. And most important of all, for you. Yeah. You're a more resource person for you. There, there was a, there was one time with th th this was a friend. Uh, this is not, this is not a, a, a strategy I would recommend taking outside of friends. But I, I had a friend who was very much the sports ball dude. Like he loved football and all that stuff sports like ball. that. And like you know, I like D and D, and he would make jokes anytime I'd bring up something about D and D and whatnot. Ah. But it was totally fine. For him to talk about football at any given point, any time and whatnot. So one night we're all hanging out and he he shows up and he gets there. He's like, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm late. I was watching the game. And he just starts rambling off all of these football terms and everything and how it was great for his fi uh, fantasy football team and everything like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's just like this one time that we were fighting a red dragon and Kyle scored a critical hit against it and won the, uh, won the whole dungeon for us. And my, my friend looks at me and goes, what? And I said, now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but, okay. See, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna bridge the sports ball D and D gap because now I want to do sports ball D and D. Um, I actually now I want to run a one shot kind of based on Terry Pratchett's unseen academicals. Um, but no, so okay, so rolling a crit, that's when you get a first down in the red zone. <laughs> all right, all right. But even better, okay, yeah. <laughs> You get that two point conversion when you need it in the fourth quarter. Oh yeah, it's like uh, with advantage. I don't know. God, uh, it's a little terrifying. Yep, yep. He plays. He sing. He says both languages. He speaketh them. <laughs> he I know it's not them. the <laughs> devil's tongue. <laughs> okay, listen, no, listen. No. I hid out amongst bros for many years in my twenties, uh, <laughs> trying to fit in. <laughs> I did not. Uh <laughs> Me neither. I already didn't fit in, so I just leaned hard into that. But the I'd like to is... think I was a good influence on their nerdery. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it, it it really does come down to like the, the I I, just, I like again at the, the end of the day, it's just why do you care, man? Like I just I don't get it. Guys, I don't get it. This is a form of privilege. Oh. To be able to walk in the world and think about your activity, whatever it is, to see, to feel like you fully just have permission to do it and it's all fine, mm -hmm. that is a form of privilege. Yes. Whoa, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. And to not be questioned, not being questioned on that. No, in a form of everybody privilege. else is just like, yeah, woohoo, go, great. Or they can participate in it with you too. You mm -hmm. don't have to explain the fundamentals when you open your mouth to talk about hockey, football, what have you. Mm -hmm. Whereas to me, it all just sounds like, you know, we were sportsing so hard like that. that that's that oatmeal comic, isn't it? It's just like totally. That's oh, we where sported I'm at so it. hard, Mitra. We sported the puck all the way into the field goal. <laughs> got really intense when the curling brooms got involved. Yeah, especially would... if you bring them in on a baseball field or something. I'm it's just turning like... into Calvin Ball is what it is. <laughs> all them balls is good at all times. Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, I think we're going to check in with chat and see what they've been up to and what questions they've got for us. Uh, we're going to start with Reaver01. Question, are chosen chosen hobbies uh, extensions of eccentricities? I, I, uh, oh my, eccentricities an extension of chosen hobbies, or do they have a significant degree of separation between the two? I feel like Reaver put that in there to make me read eccentricities so many times. Uh, so I'm going to try this again. Are chosen hobby extensions of eccentricities eccentricities an extension of chosen hobbies or do they have a significant degree of separation between the two I'm not sure i understand yeah sure why not <laughs> yeah, we're i mean go. if you're are you choosing your hobbies because you're eccentric and therefore oh! the hobby is a fit or it's kind of a it's kind of a it's almost a chicken egg sort of thing in my mind um because it is true that I might be drawn to certain things and then certainly exposure to more people doing more cool stuff means that I can get into more stuff. As in, I can go down all kinds of eccentric, crafty or artsy or 
uh, story making rabbit holes. Yeah. Right. Um, because a world has been opened and I see so much more. And I definitely actually felt this way the very first time I went to Gen Con, you know, because <laughs> um, because I think if you kind of have a, oh, hey, there's like d and and there's like board games and there's this and that. But then you go to Gen Con and it's like, boom, you know, it's all there. Plus people dressing up, plus, you know, LARPing and just like the whole world opens up. Um, and so, yeah, you might find yourself developing new different interests. Your friends might also drag you along to different kinds of games or let's sit around and paint minis or whatever. And suddenly a lot of the, there might be jigsaw puzzle pieces you were doing at one point and now they come together um, and open up to you trying all kinds of new things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we uh, one, one time we had a big group of people over to play uh, a Star Wars role playing game. And one of my friends was like, hey, uh, my my roommate, uh, Jim, wants to come with us. And I and I had met Jim before he had shaved head tattoos all down his arms, drove a Jeep like he was in the Navy and everything. And I was just like, I mean, I guess. And he was just like, yeah, he doesn't want to play. He just wants to, he just has, doesn't have anything to do. Wants to hang around people. I'm just like, okay. And so like, to me, the, the tattooed jock is coming to the D and D nerds table. And then halfway through the game, we were taking a break and Jim comes over to me. He's just like, Hey, so can I make a character? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? And he was like, yeah, I kind of want to make, like, he's like, what was that lizard dude from Empire Strikes Back? I'm like, Transdoshian. You want to make a Transdoshian? He goes, yeah, I'm going to name him Sue. And I'm like, you are my favorite person. <laughs> I love everything about this. Yeah, it was great. He played it all of our game stream. That on, it was a great player. Uh, well, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that the, like, the eccentricities and hobbies doesn't necessarily correlate. Like, it, you, you can... You could be perceived as normal and have a very eccentric hobby. I, I don't. I don't think that they specifically fall in line with it. Well, no, I yeah, think that's talking a very about good labels point. versus behaviors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think fair. so. Um, Monkey House mentions performative adoption. Um, I just want to bring Hi. that into yeah, the conversation because I up? think that's really interesting. Yeah, um, in in view of a more robust and developed personality, and I think. That has a couple of couple of reasons why that might be happening. You know, there might be a family perception or a friend perception of the things we're into. And certainly if we look at high school experiences, right? I mean, I knew nothing about hockey, but I remember the test matches would kind of take over everything for a while in my high school. Um, and uh, you know, in terms of feeling wanting to feel connection, I'd sometimes yell out, what's the score? You know, what's happening? Even though the response didn't mean much to me, but it was definitely performative. And it was definitely to feel like uh, some sense of belonging with those around me. Um, and it certainly, you know, plays into kind of um, that sense of being fraudulent, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so it doesn't really build up the self particularly much. Um, you're really just hoping to feel part of things. Um, it's lovely to just shuck that right mm -hmm. off and not have to deal with that at all. Um, and just trust in what's actually going to click in with who you are, this thing. I love doing this. This is fun to do. I really enjoy it. These are my people. Like, it's so great to be able to find that. Mm -hmm. Well, and especially if you have somebody who fits, uh, who fits what you would consider uh, the sort of majority, social majority, not numerical, but when I say majority, I mean by in terms of social power dynamics, um, the sort of majority culture that or dominant culture within a given context. And I'm, I, I, if they are shameless about enjoying something that you enjoy, that can actually normalize it and protect you from ridicule. And it's a very strange thing that. Mm -hmm. um, leveraging that privilege because Mitra's right it is a privilege I uh one of my closest friends it loved doing that to people with people um in his 20s because he was sailor okay coast guard barrel chested big burly lumberjack looking dude who blackout drunk could quote you Lebanese poetry I love that. Um, because he just loves Cahil Gibran, uh, loves Pablo Neruda, loves Rumi, just loves poetry in general. Huh. Voice of an angel, won awards for his soups in the Coast Guard because he was the galley master. 
and has almost gotten into fights over who's the bigger, better composer, you know, Sondheim versus Gershwin. And because <laughs> he doesn't fit the stereotypical mold of what you yeah. would think, he, it, 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 he loves bringing people into it and just helping them enjoy what they enjoy. Well, actually, speaking of that, uh, I, uh, Monkey House has a question that's kind of the opposite of that one. Uh, question, uh, how best can one navigate, uh, the, you know, quote, if, uh, you can't say something nice, don't say it at all when introduced to other folks' hobbies and you, uh, have a negative response. So in other words, someone else is showing you like, Hey, this is my hobby. You should get into it. And it's, you don't like it. I mean, my first reaction is to be like, say, that's not for me. I think it's really cool. That's for you, but it's not for me. I, I, I can speak to that. Um, I, I mean, I mentioned my, my musical theater experience, most of the most popular shows I didn't like, mm -hmm. I loved doing them. Mm -hmm. I loved the people I was around. I didn't like the, the material of the show and that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Other people enjoyed it. Great. Awesome. That's amazing that they found so much joy out of it. And it was amazing that I got to be a part of the process of bringing them that joy, not my jam. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I often hear this, right? Both with with uh, clients and with friends. You know, people tell me about the hobbies and the things that engage them, and I enjoy the fact that their faces light up when they share oh, stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, with friends or other people who are really interested in in wanting me to share that space with them, I can say, you know what? I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. You know, I really, I really am so happy that you're getting something out of it, and I know it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, because ultimately, if you force yourself into it, you know, it's just going to cause stress because you're going to feel like, you know, that sense of going through the motions yeah. or imposter syndrome or something <laughs> like I don't yeah. really belong here, you know. So, the, you know, the older I get, the better I know myself and the things I'm going to be drawn to, the easier this is to cope with yeah. as well, because I can just be like, yeah, it's not for me. So, mm -hmm. um, I do want to get to this, uh, this question. Um, we, we, as we're running down here on time, but we don't have a, the Bardic Inspirations off this week, so we might run a little bit long. But I, I oh. thought this was a was an interesting one. Uh, th this is from oh, I didn't read your name beforehand. I'm sorry, Cru Crucifer Cruciferous Kale. I'm gonna go with that. Um, uh, Best name. <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> That's so many. Uh, any thoughts on creative versus consumption oriented hobbies? It seems like a lot of modern hobbies, uh, mo modern hobby stuff seems mm -hmm. consumption oriented, like video games and movies, uh, movie series and such with less emphasis on things like painting, writing or building uh, than there was than there used to be. So are you talking about sort of um, hobbies where people collect things? It, it, right? it's, or, or it's a, the, because I think of that as perhaps more consumption oriented to in part because like maybe i have um a comics or an action figure collection or something right There's, i think it's more of like that... if spending money on something as a hobby rather than making something like i i guess ah. like the uh, the the i think uh, this is a weird comparison i came into my head is uh obsessed uh, being obsessed with the mcu and going to see every single one of the movies in theaters compared to whittling <laughs> okay <laughs> or like wood carving or something like that but before we get into that i just want to i want to throw out the idea that that's nothing new mm -hmm. maybe video games and cinema are relatively modern forms of technology but the consumption of art is nothing new yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you know i think there's a crossover piece here as well with certain hobbies that end up costing a lot of money because of the tools you need to acquire to do them mm -hmm. um and a need can be strong, right? Because, for instance, there's a lot of really beautiful hand sewing and patchwork stuff, right? But typically, people will get into buying perhaps a number of machines to do what they want or whatever. Um, and I think that there can be certainly judgment on buying and collecting your materials, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have a really awesome stash of paints or fabrics or what have you. Um, there is a point at which this can be problematic in the sense that you might not have as much time to do the hobby, but you may want to find ways to engage in the hobby. And so what you end up doing is collecting things that relate to the hobby. So you might collect um, fabric or Lego or models or whatever, because you just really miss doing it mm -hmm. but it's kind of a double-edged sword because 
Um, on one hand, if it's occasional and if it's like this is a limited edition thing and I'm not going to be able to get it next month when I actually have time to paint, so I'm going to buy it, that's fine. But if it gets to be like how I'm engaging in my hobby, part of the problem with that is that you might end up feeling some shame over not being able to participate in your hobby. It's like, now I've got a whole stash of fabric. I haven't used it. I've got patterns. I don't even remember which ones go with which. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not feeling inspired by any of them now. So now I have a collection of things and I may feel guilty every time I look at them. So, but this is very individual, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, but that can be a pitfall that, that we fall into when we don't have enough time for something. Mm -hmm. Well, and some, for some people, the collecting is the hobby. Yeah. Right. And that, absolutely. that's absolutely fine. Whereas yeah, I, yeah. I, for example, my Tiamat, who's missing a head right now. <laughs> I, I know people who I shout out to Goblin Katie, um, for her dice collection. Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, I'm over here spewing blasphemy on the internet as I was moving my dice collection a few days ago, thinking, I think I have enough dice. Uh. <laughs> Can you ever? Yes. I don't, I don't want to be on the show anymore. So, and, I, and I think this is why, it, you know, this is why it is so individual. Yeah. Because I know people who, you know, they might, like, Every year that I went to Gen Con, I would get a set of dice. Do I need all those dice? No, but each one is a reminder of a time and place that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. Also, dice don't take up that much room, people. Come on now. So <laughs> I can't you have enough. <laughs> okay, fine. I, don't know. I bought bleachers for mine. That's actually okay. pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. I think cool. that is pretty like cool. That. So they, they sit there like a little dice audience. Yeah, no, they, they, if they're, 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 I'm still getting get, used to Get them to, to do a Catholic wave. Yeah, they're doing the Catholic <laughs> and, wave. And, the, and I bet right. you the D20s are going like, I would have rolled better. Yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> may the peace of our Lord Muhammad be with you all. And also with you. <laughs> The, but I, I think I think for me with this, like there, there's obviously a capitalism angle here, which I'm not going to go into, but obviously that's a thing. But at the at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is something that we've kind of been talking about for two weeks. If it fills your cup, it fills your cup. And if you're not yeah. hurting anybody, you're not hurting anybody. And so as long as you are fulfilling those criteria, go have fun, go, go do a hobby, whatever the heck you want. I, I, I don't care if as long as you are getting that recharge. I'm I'm for it. I'm I'm happy you're doing it. I, I may not understand, may not be for me. That's fine. Yeah. It doesn't have to be for me. Because you know what? It refills your cup, not mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a way to continue to engage with it. Um, you know, I, Monkey House is mentioning D D books. Um, yeah. Because you can read them and engage in the game in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, does does whatever you collect allow you to engage in it? Is it or does it become a source of frustration? And th that I think is is where we, you know, kind of need to consider where we discriminate over what we choose to purchase mm -hmm. to support our hobby. Um, because mm -hmm. if ultimately you just feel guilty because things are collecting dust, then maybe you need to just, you know, rearrange. Yeah. Uh, your, you know, but if it's something you're going to engage in and you're going to enjoy, um, then do that because if it's not hurting your wallet, if it's not hurting your family or your friends, um, then it's time well spent and time well enjoyed. Heck yeah, full agree. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that is a perfect place to wrap up this episode. Uh, friends, where can people find you on the interwebs if they would like to do so? Um, I am at MitraJordan.com and, of course, at MitraJordan on Twitter. And those is them two places that you may find me. Um, <laughs> unlike my friend here, uh, the tiara-wearing uh, magician. Um, Jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> because he be everywhere, as all good magicians are. <laughs> uh, he also disappears. <gasps> you see? <gasps> uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I, you can find me at the Dr. B on all of the socials. That's T H E E D O C T O R B as in boy, but it is more important that you follow, take this org on all of the socials to keep up to date on all the cool stuff we're doing, including, including a very awesome 
uh, culture in identity in mental health panel that we're going to have this weekend led by one of our fantastic clinical contributors, uh, Cassie Walker. They're going to do a killer job with this. Heck yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the Trevor. There's an A hiding in there, and you can also find me where the All Champions community is because I'm the community manager. That's where I'll be. Uh, thank you to Jay, or to, Jay to Jordan and Martin for moderating in the chat today. Jay uh, will be moderating on Thursday, so that's a future thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, doing a fantastic job. Thank you to Codename Entertainment. Take this for giving us an opportunity to have these discussions. Uh, this week's schedule after today is uh, bonkers. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we've got uh, uh, Isle Champions Presents going uh, Wednesday. Thursday, Thursday, Friday in the morning and in the afternoon we've got seven half hour idle insights interviews with the cast that are going up at different times of the day. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on so please go check our uh, schedule on our Twitch page, our Twitch, our Twitter page our Discord and our Reddit to find out what is going on. Uh, but, uh, like I said, Bardic Inspiration is off this week afterwards. Bushwhacker Weekly will be on a uh, later today but that is going to do it for this week's episode so until next week take care of yourself. Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment.